right, so um, such as the international audience, I should point out two things, I guess. So first of all, Elaine clearly knew Johnny Cash was known as Man in Black, so I try to continue that theme. So um, for the speakers starting after the break, there's plenty of clothing stores in the area. If you're not in black, go real quick. We'll wait. Okay. Uh, as well. And then second thing is you may not realize is yes, you're in Nashville, but he recorded in Memphis at Sun Studio. The original recording studio is still there. You can walk through. You can actually do recording if you want there. Anyhow, so we're switching gears a little bit. Having said that, get important stuff out of the way, uh, to medical therapy. And what I'm going to quickly do is walk you through kind of uh, just laying the groundwork a little bit about what's changed is thinking about medicines, I guess, and then hopefully get ready for the new stuff uh, after the break as well. So keep in mind, you just heard that when we look at LGS, we only have a teeny subset that is going to be cured. So that goes to surgery, right? Everybody else would be palliation. Uh, medical therapy will always be at the bottom of that, anti-seizure medication, but these patients will be at all sorts of other therapies. We'll need device therapy on top of it. We'll need surgery to talk about the subgroup. They may combine that. There may be folks that go on to the dietary therapy bucket and the newest bucket that we will have to you soon is that we At the end of the day, I think all these folks that are very rare ones are actually going to be on medicine. So that's going to be at the bottom of the country. We have to figure out how to do it better. That's going to be there. So the key is how to do it the best we can and smart. And one of the things I would mention that you saw on um, you know, the that kind of background information is keep in mind sleep was like the second problem for these kids. But I think it's also the first problem for the hearing. which is another challenge as well that's a whole different topic uh, as well. So a couple of rules, and these are, uh, you know, I kind of, I was going to label them commandments, but that seems a little strong, so we'll go with rules. Uh, when you're treating LGS from a medical therapy standpoint, um, start with medicines that actually have been tried in LGS, and we know what to expect. And I'll come back to why that's the case as we look at a new medicine kind of a little bit uh, down the road here. Uh, as well, but start. There's a growing number. Uh, when I started this game, uh, there was one approved medicine. Uh, so it's nice to have more than one. Uh, we still uh, kind of in search for the holy grail, I would point out. Uh, but the other thing that's obvious when you look at this slide, none of these medicines overlap in mechanism of action. There's no me too, there's no... So I always like it when a company comes in and say, oh, we have a unique mechanism of action. It's like, yeah, because every medicine we use in LGS is different from every other medicine, as is every child with LGS. So it's a weird syndrome in that our medicines are all different, but somehow they work, and the kids are all different uh, that we're, we're in as well. Um, there are other medicines that have been used that maybe don't have formal labels, so we kind of think of some of these as a second uh, tier, if you will, so keep those in mind uh, as well. And then obviously we'd love to have great evidence-based therapy. I don't think we'll ever have it to say start with LGS, you know, two-year-old, three-year-old, you identify it, this is where you should start, if this doesn't work, do this next, this is best for development, epilepsy at this age, you know, 17-year-old, this is better. I don't think we're going to get there, unfortunately, with that. I would love to see that. So I think we just have to realize that we don't have that. We talk to families and pick from appropriate medications uh, as well. Um, the other thing these families face, as you heard, is yes, the seizures are there, but then everything else that enters into that kind of the, the circle of the seizure, you know, problem, if you will. So, and it's, they're always going to be on medicine. So my bias, uh, and I think it's supported, <laughs> it's not just my bias, uh, is if you're treating a chronic condition, you always want to be using medicines with a long half-life or extended release so you keep a good therapeutic e effect of your treatment. Um, so you'd like to do that. You know these kids, and as they grow up into adults, are going to have GI, other issues. You always should have a strategy that's unique to their medicine of what they do when they're late with the dose. They can't get a dose down. How do we cover for that? Because these parents are just ridden with anxiety about, uh-oh, when this happens, what do I do? Have a plan and review it. Make sure that they know what to do. Uh, eliminate triggers as much as you can. Uh, we can't eliminate all the seizures, but that, to me, that goes hand in hand with medical management just to minimize these. It's, it's kind of the backside of it as well. Um, and then this is precision medicine at its best. We're continually reevaluating therapies. You heard about the natural history. These folks are going to change their seizure types and semiology over time. Reevaluate therapies. Don't just keep piling on a therapy when a seizure type changes and they have more one type. 
And if you do, you will actually make seizures worse in LGS. And why is that? Because this is what happens, right? This is what we see is that the patient has more seizures on the bottom of the slide. The natural inclination is to raise, you know, more anti-seizure medicines. That causes sedation. Sedation is a huge fueler of more seizures. You get in this vicious cycle. So actually, in my LGS clinic, we end up taking off more medicines than we start because we can minimize sedation by lowering the meds, and often I can improve seizure control with fewer meds. So if you look at the end of the year, my population of new LGS patients us, we've usually taken away more medicines than we've started and have better seizure control globally. Uh, that's one I think we have to really get out to our colleagues as we see a lot of patients that are on five, six, seven medicines nowadays uh, that's problematic. All right, let me switch gears background to the newest therapies, and then I'll get us on time for the break, I think, because you guys look like you're anxious for more food uh, as well. So uh, it was alluded to, but you know, a, a seminal event happened in 2019 that because of the pandemic and it was at the end of the year, uh, many of you have probably not got on your radar. Uh, but the LGS Foundation largely drove it, the Dervay, there were other kind of rare epilepsies that drove this meeting with the FDA that was very unique to kind of look at you know, these uh, children, adolescents, adults with bad symptomatic epilepsies and say, what, what is important to these patients? And as you correctly heard, I mean, the seizures are you know, very important. There's a lot of other stuff, but how do we address that from a regulatory standpoint? And one of the things that came out of that that I thought, uh, you know, it's the usual kind of one of those, the duh moments, is that family said, you know what? If Johnny is walking across the, you know, the kitchen and has an atonic drop and falls and, you know, needs stitches, okay, that's one thing, but and that's what was counted in, you know, Benzel trial, Epidiolex trial, Onfi trial. But what if he's walking across and he has a convulsion and he ends up knocking a tooth out stitches? That's not even a primary endpoint. What, what are we doing here? So I think one of the nice things was that convincing the FDA that, you know, if you drop from a seizure and you get injured, it really doesn't matter how you dropped. Uh, the key is that you dropped. And that's actually changed kind of the trial endpoints. And I think will change, I hope, our thinking about how we approach these patients with our treatments. So let me just show you the first trial that I know of that's incorporated that, that has outcome data, which is the fenfluramine and the fentepla trial. So all the drops were counted as drops, but then the physicians with the families kind of, you know, said, okay, so you dropped, how did you drop? Was it atonic? Did you have a convulsive seizure and go down? Did you stare off and have a brief partial phase and then go down? Um, did you have a tonic? So they counted globally total drops, but then you kind of subdivided it out uh, into how did you drop. And then what's important is then when you look at the efficacy data for the drug, you know, what did we see? So for this particular compound, we saw that the most robust efficacy was for the convulsive seizures. So I think this is starting to change our thinking of how we approach folks. If I see an LGS patient that's mainly having atonic drops, I think more, oh, these are the treatments that they haven't been on that I should go to. If they're having convulsive drops, I may think of a different strategy. And I think we've got to start to do that and not just kind of, oh, they've got LGS, just shotgun. You know, hope I, I hope I hit the seizures uh, somewhere as, as well. And I think as we get into device and other therapies, uh, hopefully that will be part of this equation too with how do we approach the seizure types within LGS and which type is important to that patient in that moment in time. Um, I'm going to mention briefly, because I want to throw out the challenge when I conclude my talk. It's always good to conclude with a challenge, and then I can get off stage <laughs> uh, with the newest edition, so Soticlistat, or, and we'll all learn at the break how to really pronounce it maybe, right? <laughs> the challenge. So now uh, Takeda used to be Ovid, so to, if you're confused, a lot, of, a lot of this space, you know, it used to be one company, now it's another company, kind of drugs as well, uh, but they're novel compound. Uh, cholesterol in the brain only gets out of the brain if it's metabolized by this enzyme, uh, cholesterol 24 hydroxylase. It's then converted into a form that can get through the blood brain barrier, get out of the brain. This is kind of normal. Uh, the idea that was hit upon was that if you have a medicine that inhibits this enzyme, that that has a positive effect as far as regulating the excitatory, the NMDA receptor. Uh, so dampening excitation, if you will, hopefully helping with seizure control. I'm not going to go through the animal data other than tell you you should look at it. It's interesting. It's very different than we see with a lot of animal data uh, for epilepsies in that the prevention of seizures is very strong, uh, maybe less strong in the acute models. So that may even have implications as the company moves forward with studies is 
Do we need longer term? Do we need long term open labels? Should we start with younger kids? If, if prevention is better than acute effect, there's one uh, kind of published uh, phase early study just to kind of say it was looking at Gervais and Lennox Gastel. I'm just showing you the LGS data. You would have had to go to the Dervais meeting last night to see that data. No, just kidding. You only get to see the, you only get to see the data for the dinner that you're at or the food you're being served um, kind of thing. Uh, so this was exploratory. Keep that in mind. Uh, you see the dosing up to 600 a day, maximum dose. Uh, so what's the good news? In my mind, the good news is the only side effects that were present in 5% more than placebo were lethargy or constipation. So this dose apparently well tolerated. What's the downside? The downside is I don't think we know the dose, because if you look at this efficacy data, you go, wow, that's really disappointing. Uh, it didn't differentiate from placebo. Uh, so you'd say, okay, we gotta fix this. We gotta, we gotta ratchet the dose, we gotta figure out a better way, or is it the prevention aspect that we've got, you know, we're looking at the wrong part of this study. Having said that, I will say that this data counted atonic seizures again. It didn't separate them out. So we're we even counting the right seizures here. But there's a lot of questions, I think, and it will be addressed. There's more trials that are going forward. So we'll see what happens with this compound. So that's more than you want to know. Quick tour through of medical therapy. I'm going to stop there.